Are you freaking out about the math test for the core subjects EC through six? Do you need to know what's on the exam so you can be prepared? If so, then watch this video because I'm gonna walk through exactly what you need to know to pass the mathematics subtest of the core subjects EC through six. Hi, my name's Scott Roselle, and as the founder of 240 Tutoring, I have studied the core subjects EC through six every which way so I can make the best study guides for it. And in all that studying, I figured out exactly what students have to know to be successful on the core subjects EC through six. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what you need to know to pass the mathematics subtest of the EC through six test. So the mathematics subtest of the EC through six can really be divided into five areas. Algebra and patterns, number concepts and operations, geometry and measurement, probability and statistics, and mathematical instruction and process. So in this video, we're gonna break down each section, what it is and what you need to know. So let's get started. There are three big concepts you have to know for algebra and patterns. And those three concepts are solving for X, slope intercept form, and how to create an equation from a data set. Now let's look at each of these one by one. Solving for X is pretty straightforward. The test will give you an equation and then you have to solve for X. So the test will give you an equation like four X squared minus four in parentheses, three plus two equals 16. And so you have to solve for x. And in this equation, we would just need to balance the equation for x. So you would simplify it as much as you can, balance the equation, and you would find that x equals three. And if you're wondering how we simplified the equation and solve for x, I'm gonna tell you in just a little bit. But first, let's get to the second concept. And that second concept is slope-intercept form. Now the slope intercept equation is simply y equals mx plus b. And in this equation, m is equal to the slope of the line on a graph and b is the y intercept, hence the name slope intercept form. So for the equation y equals three x plus four, the slope of the line would be three and the y intercept would be four. Now the last major concept to know is how to create an equation from a data set. And the test will give you a data set that looks something like this. And you're required to create a corresponding equation that matches the data set. And for this data set, the corresponding equation would be y equals one minus two x. Now, if you look at the data set, anytime you plug the x value in, you get the corresponding y value if you solve for the equation. And while this kind of question can seem difficult, it's one of the easier questions to answer if you just work backwards. So you look at the answer options, plug in the data set values into each equation and see if they match. Now those are the three big concepts for algebra and patterns. Let's move on to number concepts and operations. For this section, there's three big concepts you should know, and I'm gonna give you two specific concepts that are almost guaranteed to show up on the test. The first big concept, and by far the most important, is order of operations. The order of operations, or PEMDAS, P, E, M, D, A, S, is simply the process you follow to simplify and work an equation. Let me give you an example. If you have an equation like two parentheses x minus three plus three parentheses x plus four close parentheses squared, you have to work the problem according to a specific order, the order of operations. In this particular example, you would first solve for the parentheses, then you would solve for the exponents, then going left to right, you do either multiplication or division. You do those in the same order left to right. Then you would add or subtract in the same order. So that's why we group the M and the D together and the A and the S. Now this is incredibly important because on the core subjects EC through six, you will be required to simplify an equation. So you have to know the order of operations to get that question correct. Now the second concept you need to know is the value of specific and sometimes irregular integers. Now the test will, and I mean will, have you place different forms of numbers from greatest to least or least to greatest. In a given data set, you might have two fractions, a decimal, the number pi, a negative integer, and a regular integer. And you must organize all these from least to greatest. So make sure you know how to translate decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals so you can compare the two to figure out which one is greater and less than the others. Oh, and also make sure you understand decimals to the hundredth place. Now the last major concept to know for number concepts and operations is how to read, structure, and apply mathematical word problems. Now my biggest tip to help you in this is simply to work through a lot of authentic practice questions to work on word problems in mathematics. Now, while these questions aren't gonna be the most complex, it does take a lot of practice to learn how to read a question prompt, 
understand the mathematical question the prompt is conveying or asking, and then taking that and boiling it down so you can solve for it. And really, it's just one of those things you have to practice, practice, practice. So find a great source of authentic practice questions that you can use. Now, let's just step back for a minute and take a break. If all this seems like a lot, it's because it is. This is a very big, very important test, and it takes a lot to pass it. The state of Texas doesn't want just anyone teaching the next generation of leaders. But if you're overwhelmed, don't be. Because 240 Tutoring has a fantastic study guide that really breaks down each of these concepts into much more in depth in this video and walks you through step by step and teaches you the concepts you absolutely have to know. The 240 Tutoring study guide is simply a one-stop, all-inclusive studying solution. So if you're wondering exactly how the order of operations works, or how to apply a word problem, or where to get authentic practice questions, look no further than a 240 Tutoring study guide. Subscribe today and begin preparing for the most important test of your life. Oh yes, before we move on to geometry measurement, I did mention there's two specific concepts you need to know for number concepts and operations. So let's go over them right now. The first is a prime factor. You need to know what prime factors are and how to find them. And the second is to be familiar with different properties of mathematics, properties like the ones on the screen. Now let's move on to the third section, geometry and measurement. Geometry and measurement tends to be a little bit more straightforward than the previous two sections. For this area, here are the major concepts you need to know. The first, you absolutely have to know the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is used to find any length of a triangle in a right triangle if you know the other two sides. The equation of the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the two sides of the right triangle and c is the hypotenuse of the triangle. And I guarantee you one thing, if you take anything from this video, take this one thing, you will have a question about the Pythagorean theorem on the math test. That is an absolute guarantee and will most likely be in some sort of word problem, where Billy walked three blocks west and four blocks north. If Billy walked a straight line, how many blocks would Billy have walked? Something like that will show up on the test. And while we're talking about triangles, before you take the test, make sure you know the different kinds of triangles and their properties. Now, the different kinds of triangles you most need to be familiar with would be right triangles, isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, and scalene triangles. Now, a lot of the differences between the triangles are really gonna come down to the differences of interior angles within the triangle. So while you're studying the different characteristics of triangles, make sure you understand the different characteristics of the interior angles of the triangles. Which really brings us to our next concept to know, and that's just the difference between complementary and congruent angles. Make sure you're familiar with the difference in when an angle is complementary and when an angle is congruent. And finally, for the geometry, you're gonna have to know how to move an object across a coordinate plane. Now, when I say move an object, I'm not saying you're physically gonna move it, but the test will ask you to rotate, reflect, or translate an option from one quadrant on a coordinate plane to another. So you need to know what the term reflect, rotate, and translate means, and how that appears on a coordinate plane with an object. So those concepts really take care of geometry. Let's look at measurement. The first is how to estimate or approximate. It's pretty straightforward. And the second is just to be familiar with different units of measurement. Units like temperature, time, money, mass, weight, volume, speed, and percentages. Now, just like with word problems and number concepts, the mathematical concept isn't necessarily complex. You just need to make sure you're familiar with those different types of measuring units. Now, let's move on to probability and statistics. Probability and statistics is by far the least complex area of the entire test. And by least complex, I mean it has the smallest range of concepts that it's going to assess. But just because something's simple, doesn't mean it's easy. If you don't understand these concepts, you're going to get these questions wrong. So make sure you're paying extra special attention. The first of the three concepts I'm gonna share with you is almost guaranteed to come up on the test. It, it's as guaranteed as the Pythagorean theorem to come up on the test. You will get a question with this. Are you ready? So what's almost guaranteed to show up on the test? Central tendency measurements. What's central tendency measurements? It's simply four concepts, mode, median, mean, and range. Now on the test, they're gonna give you a data set of about eight to 12 numbers, and they're gonna ask you one or multiple of the following. What is the mode? What is the median? What is the mean? Or what is the range of the data set? So you have to know what those central tendency measurements are and 
how to find them for a data set. And when you practice, really work on a data set about eight to 12 double digit numbers. The second concept that's very likely to appear in one of the probability and statistics questions is the concept of probability, and specifically the probability of an event. Now the two most common scenarios presented on the test is the probability of a die roll or the probability of a coin flip. And so when you see one of these questions on the test, you'll probably get one or the other of this question prompt. If a six-sided die is rolled, what is the probability of landing on any one of the sides? The answer, of course, is one in six. The next question you might get is, Billy flipped a coin 10 times. Seven times a coin landed on heads. Three times the coin landed on tails. What is the probability of the coin landing on tails on the next flip? You need to know the answer to that question for the exam. And the last major concept on probability and statistics is how to interpret different statistical models. And really, it's specifically regarding either standard deviation or quartiles. Many times when I've seen a question like this, the test will provide some sort of information about a set of students' scores. You will then have to extrapolate based on that information and the concepts of either quartiles or standard deviation, some sort of information about a certain number of students' performance on that test. Now, again, if this is all going over your head and you're just thinking you're gonna fail this thing, don't freak out. Now is a really good time to go to 240tutoring.com and get the study guide you need to prepare for this all important test. And if a lot of this information seems a little fuzzy or you just have no idea, our study guide is going to walk you through exactly what you need to know. We have hundreds of pages of instructional concepts that really break down these concepts in an easy to understand and learn manner. And we have hundreds of authentic practice questions that's going to make sure you get the necessary practice you need to pass the test. Now let's move on to the fifth and the final area of the test, mathematical instruction and process. Now the three big concepts you need to know for this section are the type of assessments and how and when to use them, the understanding of Bloom's taxonomy, and how to interpret maps, charts, and graphs. Now when I talk about the types of assessments you can use as a teacher, don't freak out because I'm really talking about formal versus informal assessments and summative versus formative assessments. Now those are broad categories of assessments and different assessments can take different forms, but you need to understand formal versus informal, summative versus formative, and when's it appropriate to use any one of those. The second concept is Bloom's taxonomy. And Bloom's taxonomy really walks through the cognitive stages or cognitive development levels of a student. The general theory behind Bloom's taxonomy is that students develop their cognitive capabilities in a pretty set way. And once you identify where a student is and what their capabilities are, you can target instruction so that the student's more likely to understand and remember that instruction. And finally, be familiar with different mathematical charts and graphs. What kind of graphs do you need to know? Because that's kind of broad. Make sure you're familiar with the following. A Venn diagram, a pie chart, a line graph, and a histogram. Now, if you're really familiar with all of those concepts, you should be good to go on the test. But if there's any questions, again, hop over to 242during.com, pick up our study guide, and make your life easier. You'll save a lot of time and a lot of heartache. Now, if you have any questions about the EC36 that weren't covered in this video, just leave a comment. We're gonna read over all the comments and we'll respond as quickly as we can to your comment. And if you thought the video was helpful, make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel. It's that kind of engagement and feedback that allows us to keep creating these wonderful videos for future teachers like you.